everyone, this would be a real quick video about installing Kali Linux in UTM on M1 MacBooks. As we all know, the new Apple Silicon has an ARM based SoC which they call M1. Since it's ARM based, you cannot use VirtualBox in order to create different guest OS since VirtualBox is primarily for x86 virtualization. As of recording this video, there is no feature or support by VirtualBox to run on M1 Max. There are a couple of pretty good options like Parallels and VMware Fusion. However, they are neither free nor open source. So I started searching for an alternative and found this amazing application called UTM. UTM employs Apple's hypervisor virtualization frameworks to run ARM64 operating systems on Apple Silicon at near native speeds. It does that by using QEMU under the hood. If you don't know already, QEMU is an actively maintained free and open source emulation software that is widely used in the industry. To get started, simply click on the download button to download UTM. You will get a DMG file so double click it to install the application like you would any other macOS application. Once you have installed the UTM app, simply open it and you should see an interface like the one shown on your screen. In order to create a new virtual machine, click on the plus sign next to the UTM title. Once you click the button, you will see a few options. Virtualize and Emulate would be the two major options present in this window. Select the Virtualize option and then you will see pre-configured operating system types. But before we do that, let's quickly download the relevant Kali ISO file. So I will go to the Kali.org official website and then go to the download section. Here I will choose bare metal and click on Apple M1. Download the complete offline installation with customization ISO. Once downloaded, go back to UTM and select Linux option. In the boot ISO section, click on browse and select the Kali M1 bare metal ISO that we just downloaded. Now simply click on next, choose appropriate memory, choose the size of your drive and then select the shared folder. This would be the shared directory between the host Mac and the guest Kali Linux so that you can easily transfer files between the guest and the host. Once done, click on next to view the summary. Here you can change the name of your Linux system and other attributes. Confirm them and then click on save. You can also right click on your Linux system and change the attributes. For instance, here I will add two CPU cores instead of default you can also leave it to be default. Similarly, you can change the display settings, the input, the network, the IP configuration, sound, sharing, and other options. As I mentioned earlier, UTM uses QEMU. That's why you can see that the drive we assign is in the QCOW2 format. Once you have set all the attributes, simply click on save. Now we have all our settings saved and we can start the installation of Kali simply by clicking the play button on our freshly configured Kali guest. Now this section is quite similar to how you would actually install Kali Linux using an ISO. Since my assumption is that everyone is aware of it, I'll simply speed up this entire section and move forward to the relevant section. Once the installation is finished and the virtual machine is rebooted, you need to remove the ISO file, otherwise you will see the installation options on every reboot. Simply click on CD DVD options of your Linux and click on clear. Once done, stop the machine and start it again. Now you would have a freshly installed Kali Linux as a guest OS inside UTM. Use your username and password to log in. However, we are not done yet. There is one last thing that I need to show you. Once you are logged in, do an apt update and a dist upgrade using the commands shown on your screen. 
Once you have updated and upgraded your system, simply install Spice VD Agent and Spice Web DAVD using the APT package manager as shown on your screen. I will also put these components and the relevant command in the description. Once the packages are installed, simply type the following command on your terminal. Now do a system shutdown. And now when you restart your system, the screen size would be automatically adjusted based on the size of your host screen. So now you have your Kali all set up and working. But if you remember, we checked the bi-directional clipboard. So let me copy text from the guest OS and paste it to the host. And as you can see, I was able to copy and then paste it to the host OS. I can also do it the other way around. I can copy a string from the host OS and then paste it to the guest OS. Besides this, there is also another feature that I really like about UTM. So let me quickly shut down the system and let's open the UTM dashboard. Now here, I'll right click and select move on my Kali Linux OS. This should give me a confirmation pop-up that if I really want to move my VM to another location. This is really helpful because you can move your virtual machines from the system to an external hard drive. Buying a MacBook with greater internal capacity is quite costly. That's why I find this feature really helpful. I can buy a cheap external SSD and use it to store my VMs. Lastly, let's talk about the feature which doesn't have much functionality but I really like it because of its coolness. You can actually change the icon for your VM in UTM. You can do this simply by right clicking your VM and selecting edit button. Then in information select icon custom. Now double click to select your icon and then press open. Click on save and now your VM would have your custom icon. I have been using this Kali VM for a while now and despite having limited resources, it's quite fast. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to add them in comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.